Up With Crim begins now. 6.30 this morning and 50 reports in one day. That's the number of unemployment scam reports Spokane PD received yesterday. This morning, how scammers are using the coronavirus pandemic to target you. It's a well, it's, uh, as they say, DOA, right? Okay. okay. DOA, dead on arrival. Well, this is the phrase the president used to describe the new stimulus bill. The House is set to vote on it this week. This morning, what is in the new $3 trillion relief bill? That's the sound of 200 goats on the run. This video might remind you of the viral Boise goat escape that happened a couple of years ago. But the one that we see now happened in San Jose, California this week. These goats are actually essential workers. They work for a company that sends them to clear weeds and suppress plant growth. But I will say, no matter what their job is, what a visual they give us, Jen. I don't think you could ever give a good enough reason for why it's not strange to see 200 goats running around in front yards. Yeah, usually they're at least in their pen. You know, you see them around here working on the sides of highways, you know, working to clear brush and whatnot. My favorite part, though, was all the people out in their front yard shooing them away, <laughs> saying, don't eat my flowers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had that close look on the flowers, too. But, of course, flowers, you know, growing a little bit better this week, Thomas, with all the rain that we've seen so far. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would be so brave as to tell a goat to shoo away from, from the yard, especially if there's 200 <laughs> of them. It'd be like... Oh, well, I'm just going to have to buy some more flowers later. Uh, this is actually a great week to do some planting outside because temperatures have been mild enough at night that we haven't been worried about any kind of frost or freeze. So a little bit ahead of schedule in terms of getting gardening done. And with the recent rainfall, if you planted on Monday, you probably loved the rain that we got on Tuesday and Wednesday. We might get a little bit more today. Uh, if not, I think Friday and Saturday are going to offer some pretty good days to do some gardening as well. A little bit of light rain over central Washington, kind of a rain band, if you will, tracking from Moses Lake to Walla Walla right now. And if we put a little loop on this, well, it's not moving very fast. These uh, showers are crawling, so don't expect this to be traveling towards Spokane anytime soon. In fact, uh, there's a live look at what looks like Coeur d'Alene. looks like sunny skies at the moment. A little bit more cloud cover back in Spokane where that observation is from. 43 degrees right now. As long as we're not in the 30s at night, I think it's good to plant during the day. Here's the next 12 hours. You have more cloud cover in the afternoon that will materialize in some showers for some areas, but not everywhere. So again, more scattered showers is what I'm saying is on tap for later on today. I'm going to be pinpointing exactly where those showers are most likely for the next 24 hours and what you can expect for this upcoming weekend all in just a few minutes. Thank you very much, Thomas. All right, we're going to update you on three things you need to know for your Thursday morning. The Spokane Arena will be transformed into a shelter for about 100 homeless people by this weekend. The Guardian Foundation will be running the shelter once doors are open. Representatives with the organization say that the arena was chosen because of size and available bathrooms, as well as the fact that all the events in the arena have been canceled. Also in Spokane County, health officials will likely begin urging people to wear masks in public. Western Washington started asking people to wear face coverings in places like grocery stores and pharmacies this week. Dr. Bob Lutz says we will see the same thing in Spokane soon. Mayor Woodward also says she supports any protocols that are suggested by Dr. Lutz. And starting Monday, Governor Jay Inslee says he's issuing a freeze on hiring for jobs that are not related to public safety and other non-discretionary activities. The freeze comes in response to the coronavirus pandemic. The hiring freeze will not apply to positions that do directly impact public safety. Now, unemployment numbers continue to grow in our region and across the country. Within the last half hour, the Department of Labor has released the latest unemployment claim numbers. So let's welcome back our own Jen York with the latest updates on those numbers. Jen. Yeah, good morning. We are tracking that breaking news this morning. About 3 million Americans applied for unemployment benefits last week. Now that brings the total number of people seeking those benefits to 36 million. Now, the April jobs report released last week showed the unemployment rate in the U.S. at 14.7 percent. That's the highest since the Great Depression. The number is expected to increase when the May jobs report comes out next month. 
And scammers are preying on people who file for unemployment. Just to put this into perspective for our area, the Spokane Police Department received 50 reports of scammers making unemployment claims using stolen information. They say in just one, that was in one day in Spokane County, 18 of the reports were within the city of Spokane. And there's also a surge in cases in western Washington. Police told our Seattle sister station about the crimes they're seeing more often. Seattle police say criminals are using this coronavirus emergency to commit unemployment fraud. And this isn't the only department sending out an urgent warning. Even a school district in our state is counted among the victims. A couple weeks ago, I received a notice on an unemployment claim on one of my district administrators who I know is working. For Beth Porter, it was intriguing enough to investigate. As Snoqualmie Valley School District's executive director of HR, she started calling on every unemployment claim that crossed her desk. I'm over 100 now, most of them coming since Thursday of last week. More than 100 fakes for the school district and at Snohomish County Sheriff's Office. Since Sunday, uh, we've received over 50 calls. Snoqualmie PD Captain Nick Almquist says his department's had nearly 60 cases since April 1st. How often can you figure out who these fraudsters are? It's really difficult. A lot of them have the addresses, the URLs that, that go nowhere. Law enforcement says some victims are finding out about the fraud when they receive a letter from Washington State Employment Security Department. Saying that, yes, your uh, employment benefit went through, it was successful. However, they never filed a claim. Police blotters are posting steps for victims to follow. First, contact your Human Resources Department, then call the state's Employment Security Department. Also, report the fraud to police and the FTC. Back at the school district, who targeted them is still a mystery. Isn't that the million dollar question we'd all love to know the answer to? What they do know is that it's one more headache during this hard time. We have staff working really hard to support our students from home. And then to have to add this on top of it seems like insult on injury. One more piece of advice from law enforcement in case this does happen to you. They say hang on to any notes or emails so you have a paper trail just in case you face any identity theft issues or issues with your credit in the future. In Seattle, Natalie Swaby, King 5 News. Natalie, thank you for that report. Now, if you are still waiting for unemployment benefits, you might receive a call from the State Department of Labor. Now, workers say if you see an 800 number calling, pick it up. They're trying to get in touch with you. They say about 7% of claims are flagged for issues. Now, that's about 57,000 people. So workers are now reaching out to those individuals to resolve the problems with their specific application. Now, because they will be making so many calls, the department is limiting inbound calls from today through next Wednesday. Joshua, they're playing catch up here, just trying to get as much of those claims processed as they can. Yeah, especially because we know that scammers jump on something like this so quickly. But yeah, good to see that the claims being sort of addressed and we're hoping that we can get people taken care of as quickly as possible so no one else gets scammed out of their money. Jen, thank you very much for bringing us that update this morning. 638 now on your Thursday this week, Democrats unveiled a massive coronavirus relief bill. It would be the fifth proposed piece of legislation related to the economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. Now the House is expected to vote on a whopping $3 trillion deal tomorrow. That bill, if passed, would extend unemployment benefits through January of 2021. In addition to the benefit extension, there would also be another round of stimulus checks and the bill would also provide $500 billion in assistance to state governments to counter the financial impact of the coronavirus. It also includes extending student loan forgiveness, assistance to farmers, and hazard pay for frontline workers. Now, before anyone gets our hopes up, even if the bill does pass tomorrow in the House, it is not expected to pass in the Republican-controlled Senate. The president even called the bill, quote, dead on arrival. This week, the president also raised concerns about the election security funding in that bill. If passed, the bill could mean mail-in ballots will be handed out in some states for the first time. I'm against it. And if you look at the bill that Nancy Pelosi is putting in, has a lot to do with elections, and then we're not going to... We're not going to lose elections because of that. Now we will be following that House vote tomorrow. We will, of course, bring you the latest updates here on Up with Krem. Coming up, it's pretty much impossible for a dentist to social distance from their patient. After the break, we will explain what one local office is doing to keep their patients safe when their doors are back open. 
And Spokane Health leaders say they will likely start urging people to wear masks. Now, we want to know what you think. Should masks be required in public during the pandemic? You can head to the CREM2 app to vote now in our live poll. And we'll see a few more scattered showers today, but just for some areas. But weekend thunderstorms are on the way. I have a detailed look of the timing of that weather system coming up next.